the homies, welcome back. So today we are moving our HVAC lines from the bump out in our master bathroom wall to the opposite wall where they're actually going to be tucked inside of the wall rather than causing extra space needing to be built around it. This is essentially doing one overarching thing, which is giving us more space in our master bathroom and adding more square footage in that shower. This is a video merely just to show you the process of how we are moving our air conditioning lines. You should only do this with a trained professional. We got very, very lucky. So I was getting kind of stressed about it. We were just gonna pay someone to do it because we were a little nervous about working with the HVAC lines. We got a quote and the quote was around $5,000 to move those lines. Whenever you add up the materials it takes to move the lines yourself, it didn't make sense in our heads why it should cost so much to do that. We asked a family friend who's an HVAC person and he was like, that should not be that expensive. Luckily, he was in town. He was able to advise us and help us with this HVAC line move. He is a trained professional, so we knew we were in great hands. This was just a total answered prayer and I, I could not be more thankful because I was getting stressed about it. I just quit my full-time nursing job. so. There was going to be changes in finances with that and God really just provided in that way and gave us just a sense of peace about that which is just so, just so thankful for that. So we'll show you how to remove the Freon from your high and low pressure mines, again just as an educational video, and how to store it instead of having to store it in tanks for the Freon you're going to be able to store it directly in the air conditioning unit, which didn't know was a possibility. But our amazing relative who was trained in this said, oh yeah, just do it that way. It's like, oh, that's genius. It can just be stored in the actual air conditioning unit while you're working on the line. So that's what we're doing today. Let's get to it, Oklahomies. It's the weirdest thing because the furnace is right above us. So the furnace, air conditioning, like unit in the attic, that stuff, the gas for where it connects to the furnace is actually over here. So it comes from the crawl space down here and then elbows up into the attic there. But then the furnace is actually like over here. So then it V's on over from there. So it doesn't make sense at all why they didn't just come up through this wall anyways and then just go straight across to it. It's like extra work, which is just, it doesn't make sense. Like a lot of things in this renovation, it just doesn't make sense. To start, we needed to move the condensation line from the air handler to being connected to our bathroom vent stack. This line was one of the four lines that were part of the bump out in the wall I hated so much. We added a connection and a P-trap to the air handler in the attic to allow the condensation to drain from the air handler down to the P-trap and then down the bathroom vent stack. This eliminated the need for a giant pee trap and a bunch of PVC hey. in the wall of that bump What you doing? Where's your ball? Oh, you found it. Good boy. Next was a more daunting task. We needed to move the high and low pressure AC lines that were connected to the AC unit and move them to the opposite wall so they were no longer requiring that extra bump out in the bathroom. This, again, should only be done by a professional who is trained to do this. Luckily, we had a trained relative who helped us with and advised us on moving our HVAC lines in a safe and proper way. To start, we gathered our necessary supplies. We connected the regulator gauge to the AC unit. You closed the discharge side. Next, we turned on the air conditioning and ran the AC setting. Once this is on, the Freon gets sucked into the unit. On the gauge, both sides will read zero. Since there is no more Freon that can go anywhere, it gets trapped in the air conditioning unit. There's different scales too. Mm -hmm. Our 22 is the green. So right now it's at 18. Oh, okay, so it's close. And this one, the green, is on 11. It's important to look at which type of Freon you have as there are different levels on the gauges depending on the Freon. Then, once your PSI is down to zero, you can then cut off the power, so turn off the circuit breaker to the AC unit and then disconnect the gauges. We then used an Allen wrench to close the discharge side. This will fully isolate both sides from what we are going to be cutting in the house. Then use the large Allen wrench to close the suction side. Now the Freon is fully isolated in the air conditioning unit and you're free to work on the high and low pressure lines. We measured out how far we needed the line to go and using a pipe cutter, cut the lines. We needed to shorten the total length of the lines as it was so much excess going into the bump out wall. 
With the AC lines, you don't want them to have hard bends or elbows. You want them to do more of a sweeping motion if possible. And that is what we were working on achieving, but with a shorter amount of lines. We did the same for a joint that was middle way up the wall and once more in the attic to provide an appropriate bend towards the air handler in the attic. We then drilled holes in the sill plate and top plate of the wall so the high and low pressure lines would fit snugly in there. Once we had our measurements and cut the lines, we used an emery cloth to clean off the excess grime where we would need to solder the new joint. Then we used flux to help clean where the solder needed to be applied to. Flux is a chemical compound that helps prepare the metal surfaces for soldering by removing oxides, promoting the wetting, and enhancing the flow of the solder. It typically comes in the form of a paste liquid or core within the solder wire. We then attached our new joints and began soldering the joints. We use the yellow matte bottle, which burns 90 degrees hotter than a typical propane torch. For this process when soldering, the lines need to be cherry red before you can solder in order for the solder to adhere properly to the metal. So your arms would get very tired by just holding the torch up for so long, but that is what's required to get the solder to actually adhere. The solder, when you get going, it will suck into the joint in order to make a good seal from the inside, and then it'll seal towards the outside as well when you continue to apply the solder. You wanna make sure that this happens so that the Freon doesn't leak out of the lines. Also, make sure that there is a fire extinguisher nearby as you are operating with an open flame, and this is your home that you're wanting to keep safe and not burn down. Now that we had all the joints soldered, it was time to start testing for leaks. So we're testing for leaks. When testing for leaks, you need to get the nitrogen bottle and the gauge connected to the nitrogen bottle. The nitrogen bottle obviously has to be filled with nitrogen gas. Yeah. So they'll probably adjust this. So it's, I think he said, Son said no more than 60 PSI. Mm -hmm. So we'd want to keep it like down 50 would be right in the middle, mm -hmm. halfway between 100. Mm -hmm. So we'd set that. Get it up to like 50 and, and then we just sh shut it off and seal the bottle so it's not going to push any more pressure into it. So there's the nitrogen bottle ready to go. Crazy. Connect the nitrogen bottle to the yellow line on the gauge. <laughs> nitrogen is a normal gas that is in the atmosphere already. This is not harmful if there is a leak since it is a normal substance that is already present in the atmosphere. Then you open both gauges on the regulator. So both the discharge and the suction. There are three faucet valves on the gauges. If two are open, then pressure will flow to the gauges themselves. Yellow will feed both sides if they are open. You are pressurizing the lines with nitrogen. Then the gauges will show pressure on both sides. So, okay, we've got pressure here. Once there is up to 60 PSI in the lines, then we shut off the nitrogen bottle to not waste more nitrogen and to not add more pressure into the lines. You want me to hold something? Tip over. The first part of testing is that if pressure on the gauges drops, then there is a leak. Secondly, you need to diagnose exactly where that leak is. So for the second test, you get a spray bottle with soapy water, and then you spray the joints that you soldered to see if there are any air bubbles that come out. There's another joint right here. Oh yeah, you definitely hear it there. <laughs> yeah, we've yeah. got two so far. We unfortunately had a few rounds of joints that needed to be resoldered so that we can make sure that the lines were appropriately sealed. After a couple rounds of that and making sure everything was good, then we were able to move on to the next step. Once there were no leaks, then we want the gauges to hold a steady pressure with no leaks for a minimum of one hour. We ended up waiting overnight to make sure there were no leaks, and then we also ran out of daylight that time, so it was time for a break. The next morning, once there were no leaks and we confirmed that the pressure had stayed steady, we disconnected the nitrogen tank. We then hooked up the electric vacuum pump to the yellow line on the gauge. 
Then we plugged in the electric pump and turned it on. The gauges will then show negative 30 PSI since it's pulling the nitrogen that was pumped into the lines out into the air now. This also will remove any excess moisture or other contaminants that could have gotten into the lines. You need to run that for an hour at negative 30 PSI to make sure there are no air and moisture in the lines. From what I looked up, and it makes sense, moisture in a refrigerant system will form ice, which closes off openings in expansion valves and cap tubes, preventing adequate cooling. Ultimately, moisture and air combined with refrigerants containing chlorine can produce acids and sludge and can cause warranty failures. So best to make sure all the moisture is out of there. Then open both valves fully with the Allen wrench. Reconnect and turn on the air conditioning, then turn the AC on. We free fill the low side, open up the valve all the way, okay, that one's open, and the other side, the hex, high pressure side, he's open all the way. So we've got some, we got pressure showing here and nothing showing on the discharge side, so I bet that'll, of course, swing way up. Mm -hmm. The low pressure side will go up fully once uh, we turn it on. A 30 amp breaker here. And then we'll have to turn on the air conditioning inside, I imagine. Make it actually turn on now. Once we showed that our air conditioning was turning on and cooling, we thought it'd be a good time to add more R22 to our system. My dad luckily had bought some previously and had some on hand, so he had brought that over. The best way to get R22 into your system, since it is a liquid that is in that tank, you need to cause it to turn into a vapor. So the best way to do that is by warming it up. To do that, since that tank is so thick on the walls, Ow! We boiled water and then put the tank in the boiling water, poured some around it, and let that slowly kind of warm up. From there, it's able to easily push those vapors through your system in order to charge your air conditioning unit. Once you're adding the R22 to your system, you slowly open the valve and allow for a few seconds the R22 to go into the system. Then you close the valve again. Then you will read the pressure and see what the new pressure is on your gauge. From there, you can get a gauge on uh, to make sure you have an adequate amount that will work for your air conditioning system. We got up to 64 so far. Seven. Let's see where it steadies out. How's it you feel differential bent now or yes, a little bit? Yeah. More like sixty-nine now. Fifty five point four. What's up? You did it, Daddy. Well, now the hard part. I think he opened this up. Did he not? Yeah, I think so. No, that's the high. And then he just purged this little brief purge. 
throw the ball away so he leaves the area. A little purge, okay. And then he opened this side. And drew in. So is that just taking out from the line? That's There's what's a in the bit tubing of oil right now. In here, uh -huh. An ounce maybe. Mm -hmm. So he just said you can just suck it into this side, then it'll go in. Mm -hmm. Just get a little free. Mm -hmm. Use it up. Okay. Oh boy! Now this last one's gonna come off. Gotta loosen it. Okay. Nice. I'm hoping we're good for a while now. Yeah, I think we are. <laughs> Once the air conditioning unit was back on, we registered at 55.4 degrees. It was and is still working great despite the Oklahoma summers. Now there's the extra problem of our windows not being well insulated and our house not being well insulated, but that is a problem for another day. So for now, thanks for joining us on our adventure of moving the air conditioning lines. Next video, we'll be moving the gas line in our bathroom, which now seems less daunting than doing the HVAC lines. Thanks for tuning in and please like and subscribe if you like this content, this video. If you wanna continue following along with our master bathroom renovation progress, there will be more videos now that I am not full-time employed as a nurse nursing can be stressful. So I'm now working at a, a direct primary care clinic and I'm enjoying that so much more. My overall goal is to be done with the bathroom before the new year. So I'm going to be working on putting out more videos. I have a few more lined up already. My overall goal is to show people that with the rising costs of everything lately, inflation, all of that, that these projects are doable yourself. Maybe not the ones that need trained professionals, but other ones that don't require that and just are cosmetic changes or things like that, you can do them yourselves. It might seem daunting, but you can do them. So I just want to show that a girl with no experience can learn to do it as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you later, Oklahomies. Welcome back. So today is a big day. We are at the final stage of moving all of the lines out of that bump out in our master bathroom wall. So today we're moving the gas line. We're gonna get going on it, so I'm excited. 